since a happy day. Joy in my feet, joy in my hands, joy in every way. God took those worldly desires, gave me heavenly fire. Now I got a brand new goal. Since I met this man called Jesus Christ, I got the joy, joy, joy in my soul. Thank you for joining me today on A Woman's Joy. My name is Donette Douglas. I'll be your host for the next half hour. And today we are going to have a Bible trivia program. We haven't done one for quite a while now called Joy in the Word. And I have found much joy in the study of God's Word. And as the Holy Spirit teaches you or gives you revelation of what it means, sometimes it, you get so excited about the Word, you can't wait to get to the next scripture. And today, I pray that you will enjoy this study. I believe. What do you believe today? Hmm? That's a good question to ask. But before we go on, I want to go to our opening scripture we've been using with the Joy in the Word program. And that's from Jeremiah 15, 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. I did eat them or I did consume them. You know, we can read the word of God, but then when we sit and study on it, we meditate on it, even ponder on it, even do some research sometimes, looking up meanings of words so we have a better understanding. We pray, we ask the Holy Spirit to teach us, to reveal what God is saying to us that day. Amen. Amen. And this is how we come to know God, is through the Holy Bible. You know, uh, here at WTJR, TJR, many of us have friends with Pastor Tom Waters, and he shared a lot of sayings and good stories with a great, great uh, biblical meanings to him. Yeah, amen. But he often said, I believe this book is true from the front page to the back page. Even on the front page, it says, Holy Bible. I believe that's true. And I agree with him. I believe this word is true. God has proved himself over and over and over that the word here is true. I pray today, in fact, let's just pray. Holy Spirit, I pray today that you will teach us from God's holy word. You will give us understanding. You will show us, God, maybe something we need to apply into our life and then help us to be able to apply it and use it in our lives. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, I believe. What do you believe today? I asked you that question just a few minutes ago. What do you believe? Do you believe the Holy Word of God is true? Do you believe Jesus Christ came to this earth, born of a virgin? Do you believe that he went to the cross, shed his blood, that our sins would be washed away? Do you believe that he arose on the third day? And he's now seated at the right hand of God. Do you believe that he's coming back one day to take God's children home? Do you believe that? Well, we all have things we believe. But do you believe this about the gospel of Jesus Christ? That's the most important question. And I pray today you have received Jesus into your life, you have confessed your sins and ask the Lord to walk with you each day and be your Savior and your Lord. Amen. There is a difference between Savior and Lord. Amen. But He will do that and the Holy Spirit will be there to help teach you and to walk with you and to pray for you when you know not how to pray. Amen. Amen. So believe means to accept something as true. Feel sure of the truth of. And to believe means to have faith when it comes to God. Do you believe? Just like I asked those questions about Jesus Christ. Do you have faith and believe this to be true? Well, this is going to be our first fill in the blank for today. We are going to go to Hebrews 11, 1. That's just talking right along with I believe. 
Now faith is the substance of things, fill in the blank, for. The evidence of things, and then there's two words to fill in there at the end. Hebrews 11, 1, they've referred to as the faith chapter many times. You got the answer? Well, the answer is, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So when we hope, we have confidence that it's going to be. An expectation is going to happen. Amen? Let's go to this next verse from Hebrews 11, verse 6. See if you can fill in these blanks. Very familiar scripture. But without, fill in the blank, it is, fill in the blank, to please him. For he that cometh to God must fill in the blank that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently, and then there's two words there again at the end to fill in. Hebrews 11, 6. Let's see what the answer is, okay? Say it with me. But without faith, it is impossible to please God, please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Seek him. Do you believe? We start at the very beginning of the Bible in Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Do you believe that? Amen. I do. I do. I believe that he so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I believe that. I believe that one day Jesus is coming back. I believe there is a place called heaven. I believe there's a place called hell. Do you believe these things? I believe. Well, today, I believe today, right now, will be a good day because God made it. Do you believe that? I believe that today will be a good day because God made it. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. That's what scriptures tell us. Well, let's go to this fill in the blank from Psalms 118, verse 24. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will fill in the blank and be Fill in the blank in it. This is a day which the Lord hath made. Okay, say it with me. What's the answers? We will rejoice and be glad in it. Are you rejoicing today? Are you glad in it? I looked up the meaning for the word rejoice. We're going to look up a lot of meanings of words through this program, which will help give us a better understanding of what God's saying to us. Rejoice is to feel joy or great delight. <laughs> Are you feeling great delight today? I do because I know God's with me. I know I'm not alone. I know that he loved me first and he loved me the most and he gave his only son. And because I have confessed my sin, ask him to forgive me, to come into my heart he is my Lord and Savior. My name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. And I have the hope of eternal life in heaven with God. That's what I rejoice about. I rejoice about God, what he's done in my life and for me. And the next word, glad. Be glad in it. Glad means feeling pleasure, joy, delight. You know, we rejoice and are glad at a lot of things in this world. Somebody wins a big prize, they rejoice and they're glad. You go to an athletic event and your children or grandchildren are in it and they hit a home run or make a touchdown. We're rejoicing, we're glad in it. But as God's children, are we rejoicing and are we glad in Him? I've seen some pretty sad faces around sometimes. And I'm guilty too, because sometimes we can get our eyes off of God, onto ourselves and onto the situation around us, and that joy leaves us. 
So we need to keep our eyes focused on God. Amen. And remind ourselves, I believe today will be a good day because God made it. Amen. Amen. Well, let's go to our next fill in the blank. I believe I have all I need to accomplish his purpose in my life. And we're going to use 2 Peter 1, 3. According as his divine power hath given unto us, now there's two words there to fill in, that pertain unto, fill in the blank, and fill in the blank, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Now this might be a little harder, and you may not have read this verse for a while, but I just want to do, go ahead and include it. So God's going to teach us a new verse today and the meaning, okay? So the answer on this, 2 Peter 1, 3. According to his divine power, hath given to us all things. Say that after me. All things that pertain unto life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. 2 Peter 1, 3. So I believe I have all I need to accomplish his purpose you living for yourself are you living for his purpose in your life the word all three letters right there big word big word only three letters but it's a big word all means the entire entire the whole total amount the quantity or extent of every member or part of the whole number or sum of all he says according to his divine power he hath given us all things so he kept nothing back nothing back and the word godliness we don't hear that word much just like being holy we're to be holy as he is holy but godliness means believing in God and in the importance of living a moral life. Is it important to you that you live a moral life before your family, your children, your neighbors, your co-workers? Is it important to you? It should be. It's important to God. It's important to God that we live a life of godliness, a holy life. Yes. I believe nothing is too difficult. Ooh. Nothing is too difficult for me because nothing is impossible for the God who lives in me. So if you have confessed your sin, you ask Jesus to come into your heart, be your Lord and Savior, he lives in you. And the Holy Spirit comes to help you live this life because we can't. We're still in this flesh body. And this flesh body will fight against the Spirit of God. Yes, it will. So I believe nothing. Do you believe that? You do believe that nothing is too difficult for you today? Because nothing is impossible for the God that lives in you. So let's go to Philippians 4.13. This will be an easy one for you to answer. I can do two words, fill in the blank, through Christ, which fill in the blank, me. Okay, read it with me. You already know it. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Now, it's through Christ, you notice. It's not through me. I've tried to do some things on my own, and I fall flat on my face, or I cause more problems, or hurt people, or whatever. It's not me. It's me. It's not me, I should say. It's God who strengthens me. And I looked up that word, strengthen. To make someone or something stronger, more forceful, more effective, etc. And you know, God reminded Paul, my grace is sufficient. For when you are weak, I am made strong. So when we are weak and we cry out to God to help us, his strength will be there for us. Anytime we crawl out to God and ask him to be there and help us, his strength will be there for us. God is for us. He's not against us. No, he's not. 
and he will be there. Just cry out to him. Trust him and believe. Say, I believe nothing is impossible to me because of the God who lives in me. Amen? I believe even the biggest challenges in my life can be redeemed for my good and his glory. And all of us have been there, a time in our life where we see no hope. Oh boy, I've hit the bottom this time. I see no finances coming in. Um, I'm physically, my body is just broken down. I don't see where anything good can ever come. And you know what happens? When we trust God, when we pray and pray the prayer of faith and we trust God and let him take us through that storm. Wow. Let's go to Romans 8, 28 and see what it says. Our next fill in the blank. And we know that, and there's two words there to fill in the blank, work together for, fill in the blank, to them that love God, to them who are the called according to, and there's two words there to fill in. Again, another familiar verse. You should be able to say this one with me, okay? So let's say it together. And we know that all things... There's that word again, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose, his purpose. Good. I looked up the word good. You know, one time they called Jesus good and he said, I'm no one's good but the father. The Bible also tells, and I, and I talked about this earlier in the uh, program, every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. He gave the best for us. You go back in Deuteronomy 28, it talks about the blessings that will follow those that love the Lord and obey his commandments. And you read through the Bible he just talks about blessings all the time. He loves us. He wants to give us good things. Good of high quality, correct or proper, of high quality, good. Purpose, and it's his purpose, you notice at the end, to those who are called according to his purposes. Purpose is the reason why something is done or used. The aim or intention of something. The feeling of being determined to do or achieve something. The aim or goal of a person. What a person is trying to do, become, etc. Each one of us were created with a purpose. The Bible tells us that God knew us before we were born. We was with him. He had a purpose. He had a purpose for Jesus to come to this earth and to be born in a manger, to go to the cross. Why? Because sin had come into the world. And back in the Garden of Eden, sin had come into the world. Darkness, sickness, anything evil had come into the world. And Jesus, because he was without sin, was the perfect sacrifice, the Lamb of God. And because of that, our sins are washed away. Because of that, Jesus said, it is finished at Calvary. Everything was completed that you and I would have an abundant life in Jesus Christ. We have a purpose. The Bible says the Word of God has a purpose. It says it goes out with a purpose and it does not return void. I am so thankful that God so loved us. He made a way for us, and we have a purpose. We have purpose in our life. Amen? Amen. Also, I believe I am loved just as I am. Oh, boy, that's one the enemy uses a lot. He'll say to people, no one loves you. Nobody cares. That's not what God's Word says. I have never read this in here about God. I believe I am loved 
just as I am. Say that. I believe I am loved just as I am. And called to become even more like Jesus every day. God wants us to grow just as a baby goes from crawling, you know, sit. Well, first they sit and maybe they'll roll and crawl. Then they walk. He wants us to grow and mature in him. Amen. So let's use this scripture from Hebrews 10, verse 14. Hebrews 10, 14. For by one offering he, God, hath, fill in the blank, forever them that are fill in the blank. And this is kind of hard maybe to fill in, but again, I wanted to include this because it's so powerful. Hebrews 10, 14 says, for by one offering, which was Jesus Christ, God hath perfected. Think about that. He perfected forever them that are sanctified. Fill the blanks in there. Hebrews 10, 14. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Well, I had to look up the words in yellow here on the screen. Perfected. That means having no mistakes or flaws. Completely correct or accurate. Having all the qualities you want in that kind of person, situation, and etc. God is working to perfect us. Yes, he is. To perfect us. That we will have no flaws in us. You know, it talks about the bride in the Bible, you know. Well, first of all, I should say that Jesus is the head. He is the bridegroom. And we, the body, are the bride. And it says that he's coming back after a bride without spot or blemish. So he's going to work in our lives, those of us who have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He is going to work in our lives to perfect us. In uh, John um, 15, it talks about pruning us. There's a scripture that talks about he's the potter, we're the clay, and he's molding us. But he's always trying to work those things out of us that are not of him. So what? He can work the things into us that are of him. So he's working to perfect us. Sanctified. Many of you have heard that word many times in the Bible about being sanctified. Sanctified is to make something holy to give official acceptance or approval to. To make something holy. Again, he's perfecting us to be holy. Because what? In heaven, there is no sin. It's a perfect place that God created. Amen. That should excite you. That you have the opportunity. God made a way through Jesus Christ that you could have that eternal life. Amen. Let's move on. I believe that he, God, isn't finished with me yet. And he's able to complete the good work he began in me. I believe he isn't finished with me yet. Remember that song? He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and stars, sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be. He's still working on me. Amen. Philippians 1.6 now, this is a more familiar verse, and you want to be able to fill this in. Being, fill in the blank, of this very thing, that he which hath begun, A, and there's two words, in you will, fill in the blank, it, until the day of Jesus Christ. And the answer for that is being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Confident means having a feeling or belief that you can do something well or succeed at something, having confidence, certain that something will happen or that something is true. I believe. I am confident. I know. I can stand on this. I can stand on the Word of God. It is truth. I believe it. Amen. And our last fill in the blank today, 
I believe I am an overcomer. You believe you're an overcomer today? This scripture, fill it in. This is a familiar one. So I look for all of you to get 100% on this. Nay, in all these things, there that is, we are, fill in the blank, than fill in the blank through him that loved us. So nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him, God, that loved us. Jesus loved us. He went to the cross. God loved us. He gave his only begotten son. I believe I am an overcomer, more than a conqueror, and nothing will keep God from carrying out his plans. A conqueror means to take control of. Through the use of force to defeat someone or something, through the use of force to gain control of a problem or difficulty through great effort. Well, we can be conquerors because of the finished work at Calvary. Because God loved us, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And because Jesus defeated death at Calvary, we are victors. Jesus was the victor. We are victors because of God's great love because of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So in Romans 8, 32, I want to read this real quick. We're going to go out on it. One, Romans 8 is one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. I read it so many times. It's ministered to me so many times. And I'm going to start with verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also make intercession for us. And I'm going to go down to verse 37. Yea, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, or things could come. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. I believe that. Do you? Have joy in your heart today. Ask Jesus in, okay? One day I was walking in a world of sin, no rest for my weary soul. Then I met a man, said he'd be my friend, all my burdens he did roll. He took those worldly desires, gave me heavenly fire, now I got a brand new goal. Since I met this man called Jesus Christ, I got the joy, joy, joy. the desert I would swim across the sea I would fight a thousand armies if that's what God asked of me I would climb the highest mountain 